This is Blisso. And I'm Vic. Vic's is uh, slowing up a bit. And together with Mon and Cable and occasionally some of our favourite humans, we are Old Mac Crew. Join us on our adventure as we discover the best camping and swimming spots Australia has to offer in our old patrol and hybrid caravan. See what we get up to, the secret spots we find and become a part of our Old Mac Crew. is named Gallipoli Beach uh, because of its resemblance to Anzac Cove in Gallipoli. Uh, it's so much like what Anzac Cove looks like in Gallipoli that in 1980 they made the movie Anzacs starring Mel Gibson in this exact spot. While Bliss was flying the drone I was actually in the water having a swim and you actually feel very reflective in that beautiful water lying there and you just look at that beach, that rocky area and you just can't help but think of all the Australian men who were killed in that beautiful spot in Gallipoli. I think of mothers and wives who sent their sons and husbands over to a place they'd never even heard of and didn't come back in the five days of the battle of, at Gallipoli there were 860 Australian deaths you can imagine 860 bodies lying on this beach and I think of Brando, Logues, Brant I can't imagine my brothers, my husband what you would feel like having your people you love over there fighting like that. I mean, it will never happen again. We'll fight wars in different ways from now on, but yes, it was very reflective and I can't imagine launching out of a boat in this beautiful water and heading to goodness knows what. Ten bucks a night, you can't go wrong. Toilet block just there, has cold showers. So this little green shed has a couple of tables you can set out and have lunch. And there's a big uh, bin just there behind the toilets. Beach just over the way there. It looks like the sunset is going to fall down over the beach, so we'll spend the afternoon down there. Free Wi Fi. Eh? How good. And they're right there. here at farm beach come out for the afternoon it's about six o'clock just come out here to sit for an hour maybe watch the sunset and this is the first time on this trip actually i think it's the first time we've used it in anger we're going to pop out the awning this is this is our new 360 awning that the boys put on 
during the winter. When we put it up in our backyard, it worked amazeballs. So let's see how it goes out here on the beach. I gave Blisso about 97 directions of where to park the rig exactly at what angle so we'd get a bit of shade. This is why I'm not allowed to help with directions. No shade. Sometimes he just lets me go so I can learn a lesson. While we're down here at the beach, Vic's having a bit of a bit of a swim swim. I thought, oh well, I'm gonna go for a bit of a walk. I just seen these rock sort of formation bits around it. Uh, the shore here and I come across this cave it's not very deep but it's awesome have a look at it I'm not real going to go too far because I've got my shoes on and I'll come in here that's pretty cool that's awesome and that's like the view Looking to the outside, I'll try and get out of the sun a bit so we can see it a bit better. Look at this under here, a bit of an undercut area. Whoop, can get right up underneath. Probably see that a little bit better, maybe. Look at that. Things you find when you just go for a little look. Well, the wife was screaming out at me. Thought she must have been in trouble, and look what she's done. Snorkeled hey? me a crab! You're He's right alive! Here. See, look! He's upset. Good lord. I captured you, him! Do you see crab? I think so, I don't know, I think so. Looks yeah. like a sand crab. He yeah. looks like delicious! Yeah. Well, there you go. I was over there exploring caves, and he's here yelling at me. <laughs> well, because of this, hey? That's cool, though, isn't it? It is, I captured it! Hey? I got it cool, with it? my bare hands. Good work. He's a sink. Crap. Sucker. Let's look at the top of him. Yeah. yeah, I think they are a sink crab, but if anyone can verify that, let us know. Are you allowed down to the keep comments. sink crabs? I don't know. We better they, check it out. They're going to be you? a certain size, I think. Yeah, I'm not he sure. Too small, he looks though. small. He doesn't look very big, but I'm not sure on the sizing. We'll check it out. Check it out. But I caught my that, first eh? crab How with good. my hands. How good is that? Goes. That's awesome, isn't it? Yep. Good work, there. Thank you. I'll just go and sit back up there now. Yep. While she catches. Take me crab here. You can have it. <laughs> <laughs> it's all yours, D. Good work. Thank you. Seven o'clock. Ten past seven. Still swimming. Love South Australia. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we checked out the crab. It was a sand crab. And the size is going to be ten centimetres across the carapace. So across its body from end to end and this one was only nine anyway so, we're not really massive fans like if yeah. i had a caught a big mud crab in cape york i probably would have had a crack at it but we're not i, I yeah nah no nah. just for the mess and the cleanup and everything and just for one crab oh one oh she got two i got two you crabs. got two i forgot about the other one she got Thank another you. one but it was smaller and different color yeah it was so a different kind of crab we just let them both go so uh yeah, we'll check out and see what it was but anyway they back both home now happy to be there i just pretty much wanted to see if i could do it yeah okay Vic said there was a few out there oh lots out there yeah but you've got to be able to get a hold of them yeah and probably not need, let them get hold of you yeah probably need gloves i reckon for oh, that sort of thing but i've yeah. got gloves but they're in the car too hard yeah, yeah too hard <laughs> <laughs> all right oh, we're gonna sit back and enjoy this sunset yeah.
the campsite was just a campsite, but it had toilets, and I think there's a cold shower there. And how much did it cost again? Ten bucks a night. Ten bucks. And from there, we walked down to. No, we didn't. Didn't, <laughs> didn't walk. Didn't Come walk. On. We drove down to uh, Gallipoli Beach, which was amazing, and um, had a swim there. And then last night we headed out at sunset and had a swim there, and wifey caught some crabs and had a good dive. So yeah, it was really definitely a beautiful spot for 10 bucks a night. You can't ask much more, can you? Yeah, no, you can't. And the toilets are flushing toilets. Yep. Yeah, so that's just a bit of a bonus. So it's a good little spot just to go out and check out Gallipoli Beach and check out the sunrise on the beach there. Think about a good day. He means sunset. We did not catch the when sunrise. When I say sunrise. <laughs> yeah. Sunset, people, sunset. Yeah. We don't see many sunrises. We, we do not. We do not. All right, so it's off to Greenlee Beach. We'll check it when we get there. about a mission it's 7 30 oh we're here at Greenlee Beach it is absolutely blowing a gale it's got to 7 30 and I've had to chuck the towel in and realize I'm gonna have to cook dinner inside tonight we've never cooked dinner in the caravan so what we're gonna do I'm just gonna make a quick tuna mornay so what I use for the tuna mornay is I use a big packet of these uh, pasta and sauce mixes so I just chuck that on, I've made it up as normal. And then I'm just gonna add a tin of tuna and a tin of veggies, and that'll be like a tuna mornay, which we can just eat out of a bowl. But I went outside to get the milk and the butter, and I sat the butter down and it blew a kilometer away. So I chased it by the time I got back, the milk was A over T. So I picked it up, hoping me draw, got out a cup, sat it down, another kilometer run, try and retrieve it. Whew, it is absolutely blowing a gale. I can hardly get the door open. But anyway, I love it. Bliss hates it. Don't you, Blisso? Yeah. Very good. I love it. It uh, feels a bit wild. But um, anyway, I'll get this dinner going because when he's upset, you don't want to compound it by not feeding him. That'll just tip him over the edge. So if I suggested salad, not great. So cook him up some warm tuna mornay that should get us over the line and uh we'll check you when it's ready i'll give you a look at it so just threw in a tin of peas and corn peas and carrots and a big tin of tuna there it is responsibly sourced and i leave the I leave the juice in the tuna just to run it through a bit of flavour and because I'm adding a bit just to make sure I've got enough sauce but now it's just got to come back to the boil, thicken up a bit and we'll call that tuna mornay for dinner. Well there we go, 20 minutes later and we've had this van four years and this is the very first meal I've ever cooked inside and there it is, tuna mornay done the easy way. What do you reckon blue sauce? You hungry? Yeah, I am now. I can smell it. Oh, excuse my dirty sink but there's no room to move in here. All right, let's get into it. Oh, morning guys. Well, Greenlee Beach. Holy moly. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. We were awake pretty much all night. I got up and made us a coffee at three o'clock. Thank God for Starlink. <laughs> three o'clock this morning, Bliss was on his phone trying to find a spot that's gonna be out of the southerly. 
I used to watch the YouTube videos of people in these absolutely beautiful spots and they'd go, oh, it's so windy, we've got to move on. And I'm like, you losers. It's wind. But last night, oh, mate, the caravan was a rockin' and we were not rocking it. Were we, Bliss? No, not at all. Like, it was just... Just blowing <laughs> all night. When we got there, it was a breeze, you know, it would have been... 20k an hour wind, which is still uh, doable. It's not. But, but then as the afternoon came on, got heavier and heavier, and just all night, 50 km an hour gusts, wind at 40 km constant, like it was no good. Like, don't get us wrong, the spot's beautiful, but I tell you what, make sure it's not going to be a windy day when you go there, especially if you're up in the high sections where we, where we were. We were in number seven, but there's seven, eight, nine up there. Like literally, the van lifted and rocked all night, and it was hard to sleep because I have anxiety about rolling. And I just thought, I just kept waking up thinking, oh, we're moving. And well, we were, but it was only sideways. So, anyway, that was an adventure. I apologize to every single YouTuber I've called a loser because I couldn't camp in wind because wind is ridiculous, especially there like that. Was you just sit in the van all day, it's no point being in such a beautiful spot if you can't get out and enjoy it. And especially night when you can't sleep. So we, when we got there we said straight away we'll stay another night until last night. We're out, so we're just going up here to check out the Tombok Campground. It's supposed to be fairly protected so we're going to get in there and see what it's like. It's only 2Ks down the road but I think it's behind these dunes here somewhere. And um, try and get some stuff cleaned out. Missed the so, turn off. I'm thinking it was up there. Big dog was gonna do a howl in. Oh, remembered he's, he's remembered he's got the van on the back, so he had to pull up. All right, let's All right. go and check this one out. But I can give you the hot tip: if it's not sheltered from the wind, we're not staying. Going on here, dear. Just having a bit of afternoon tea. Blah. Can't go without them. What are you gonna have? Oh, yeah. The old deltas. So, dear. <laughs> How do you feel now? I feel better. I feel cleaner. Well, I'm not cleaner, but the van's cleaner. It's taken me a couple of hours to get the sand and the salt off everything. The sand was just everywhere. I was laughing at Anthony because we had his window open. He was facing the sea and there was all sand on his side of the bed. And I was like, <laughs> that's what you get. Bad luck. And then we, so we closed his window off last night. And then I woke up this morning and... I was just covered in a layer of silt because my window was open. But my window was at the back, so I wasn't expecting it to blow in my window. But anyway, it was just like a layer of silt over me and my side of the bed and all through the van, all through the kitchen. It was just an absolute mess. It was worse cleaning it after one night there than it was the time I cleaned it at Lake Argo when we came off the gib. Oh my lord, there was some sand in there. But anyway, she's back to being mint. Everything's cleaned and wiped and blown down and yeah. sand free. Hello. Except Anthony's side of the bed, I left it. Yeah, I'm sure she did. <laughs> no, I didn't. But I've still got to wash it. Yeah. It's still a bit out of going. Yep. But anyway, it's clean and we're sand free and we're in the most boring camp spot that we've been in the whole time we've been away and we feel bloody lucky to be here <laughs> it's peaceful there's no wind and it was just a really good space to just pull up plenty of shade big area and yeah give everything good clean which we did just 
catch our bearings after we got up at three o'clock this morning. Mm. It's no good. No. And anyway, we um, we drove. I think it was a a very big two kilometres today to get to here. So we left Greenley, which is just over there, and come to this little camp. Oh, this camp here. It's called Tom Bott's Campground. Um, but it's very sheltered, so the sea's over here. There's a dune over there, you probably can't see it. Over there. But the sea's in over there, we're very protected here amongst the she oak trees. So uh, we just come here to escape that wind. Uh, it's five bucks a night here, it's just a bush camp, nothing here at all, but geez, I tell you what, it's a lifesaver after being in that wind all night last night, yesterday afternoon, last night, and this morning. So we, yeah, so anyway, we'll just can't, we'll stay here tonight, sort a few other things out. <sighs> and see so what tomorrow brings. I think tomorrow is going to be less wind. Um, so we're hoping to probably head to a free camp near Halls Beach there somewhere and then go on to Sharinga Beach from there. Anyway, we're going to enjoy this coffee, the Montes, and we'll talk to you then. All part of caravanning life, we're just... Big just had a shower and I just noticed there's some water running out of the corner of the van. I had a look under the sink and the water's been leaking out of here. It was just spurting out there a minute ago. I got Vic to turn off and I tried to tighten it. it seems to have fixed it. I'll keep an eye on that, but anyway, it's all part of it. Yeah, because we've come out before, haven't we? And it's been all like it's leaked yeah. so badly, it's all down the floor and everything. So at least now we know to keep an eye out for yeah, it. Yeah, it's been done, it's done it before and we took it in to get it all fixed. It's been good right until this moment, so I was just sitting outside and noticed it. So lucky that, otherwise it would have ended up just leaking all that water out over. You know, especially if it started leaking tonight and didn't notice it. Yeah. Anyway, just a little tip to keep an eye on things in your van. Just make sure everything's sweet as. Know your van. Know your van. Yeah. And just keep an eye on things like that. If you see anything unusual, check it out. Don't think it'll go away. Yep. All right, guys. Last time we tracked. I packed way, way too many clothes, ridiculous amount. In fact, we had like a massive, massive bag that Blisso got the irrits and strapped on the roof about week three and we never touched it. So this time I thought, right, what can I do? So I got these, which are, they're actually called backseat organizers. And that's, you can see they're in four parts, four separate sections. So I've got two of those that slide in. That's my one. And that's Blusso's one there. So they just slide in. So we've taken the mattress, the double bed mattress, off this bunk bed and we're using it as storage. So that's where our clothes go. So I'll slide mine back in there and that's Blusso's. So whatever we could fit in there, we're allowed to bring. Now Blisso's is pretty, pretty low. Mine's packed, but it's not overpacked. Whatever's in there, that's all we're allowed to have, and that's what we've got. So I thought that's a really good, easy way when you don't have a lot of cupboard storage for clothes like we don't, to keep your clothes tidy and make sure you don't bring too many of them. You could even, I suppose, put pairs of shoes in here. But anyway, we didn't do that, but you could. All right, just thought I'd show you that little tip I picked up for clothes packing when you don't have a lot of room. Oh, morning guys, we enjoyed our beautiful peaceful camp away from everything beautiful. Last night, yesterday, it was just really peaceful here and we got a lot done. We re-packed the van, got it all clean because it was absolutely full of sand. So we cleaned everything, had a really lovely, just relaxing day. Had the Starlink going all day, kicking goals. <laughs> and then last night we were went to bed early and we were watching a movie, Starlink, streaming it on Netflix. Next minute, what happened, Bliss? No power. No power. It just shut itself off. So one minute we were sitting there happy as Larry. Just, I'm on the iPad. Bliss is flicking through his phone. We're both watching a movie out of the corner of our eye. And next thing we're just in complete darkness. And we both looked like sat there and like it was a blackout just waiting for the power to come back on. And then we thought, oh, bloody hell, we're off grid. We're going to have to do something. 
<laughs> so what did we learn, Blisso? Uh, that the Starlink uses a fair bit of power because you can't actually see the power it's using, so I don't know. And I've heard a lot of people talk about using power, but because um, it runs, it runs off our inverter, doesn't it? You yeah, need the inverter need to run two, it. Need two forty, so it runs off the inverter. And we had it going pretty much all day when we got here to find a camp and stuff when we leave here and then we just settled in and just left it on all day we we're kind of assuming that what we were using the solar would be putting back in during yeah. the day we were more worried about the night time but we just kind of silly assumed that it the power we were drawing with the starlink would be going back in with the solar but that was not the case no so when we had the bed it was just getting dark and fix it we'll put a movie in that on and all good got about half an hour in boom, boom, yeah all over so it uses more power than we think but in saying that we had it going pretty much all day the day before too so um, we're running a couple of tech world lithiums which have been good and I say if it's using the power I think it's using that's a pretty good effort because we absolutely flogged it yesterday so just i'm going to do a bit of research and try and find out just how much it does use off the inverter or the invert and just so we know how long we can run it for yeah. like run it through the day turn it off at night or just run it a few hours at night time to watch a movie or upload a movie uh, an episode or something like that yeah um so yeah anyway because we were saying like we don't technically need to run it i could we could turn it on for half an hour do everything we need to do you can download the movies off Netflix so I could easily download them and then watch them on the telly from there so it's just a matter of learning how to use it but also the thing with the lithium batteries is they go from hero to zero very they, quickly they like they just warning. chuck the towel in one minute you're happy as Larry got 97 things using power and the next <laughs> minute they just go you have gone too far yeah. <laughs> they just stop yeah, they just, just... Yeah, they just stop. So you don't get a lot, no warning. Not like AGMs, you can see them slowly coming down. The lithiums just sort of sit on one level all day. So you just don't know where you're up to. So yeah, we've got a percentage thing that tells you the percentage, but if the voltage don't move, then we don't know what we're up to. So well, I think the next step for this van is get one of those monitors that monitor off lithium, because this one's actually designed for AGM. So the voltage doesn't move, the percentage doesn't move so we need one that says oh yeah we've got 13 volts but we've got 70 cent power left that's so that's what we need and that'll tell us exactly how much power we're using as well so yeah. so we're not we haven't got that gauge to, to regulate how much we're actually using at the time and how much power we actually have left yeah because we we were just we've been pretty blase with the power and we just don't really think about it because it's never been an issue but like we had that starlink going all day we just treat it like it's a house. We had iPads charging, GoPros <laughs> charging, the the yeah. telly on, the Amazon Fire Stick cranking. Starlink on. We had the Starlink going. We had the lights on. Like, but, it, but it's a credit credit to lithium, like how long they do actually last yeah. compared to AGM. If that was AGM, we wouldn't have got half a day out of it. Yeah. So it is a credit, and it's lesson learned, and it gives us an idea of how much we've got yeah but um yeah we learned something yeah so now it's good i'll tell you what we didn't learn we didn't learn what happened in the end of that movie <laughs> it was upsetting yeah. uh, but we had to it's just so strange because one minute you know we were like happy as larry and the next minute it was just complete darkness complete silence and we were like yeah. Oh shit. And then with lith lithium, once they go flat, you've got to wake them up. They can't just turn the charger on and they start charging like AGM. You've got to actually wake them up once they shut themselves down. The only way to do that is to give them a jump off another power source. So all I did then was hook the truck up to the caravan off the second battery, to, which was enough for the charger to say, yes, there's a battery there that wakes them up, and then you can charge them from there. So, once they're asleep, you've got to wake them up. Yeah. It's a bit like Vic. It takes a bit of doing. <laughs> it takes a bit of doing. <laughs> but it's easy if, if, if you can just jump it off another battery. Yeah, it works very easily. But you can't just stick a charger on there and turn it on. It won't start charging because as far as the 
charger is concerned, there's nothing there, so it won't charge. Yeah. So you've got to wake the batteries back up, which the first time it happened, we worked it out. This time I knew what to do. So yeah. Lucky. It's pretty easy. Lucky because um, <coughs> we were in the middle of nowhere because we were able to get the generator out for an hour or so and um, Just put the it, generator on. and Get us through the night. With yeah. The and stuff. Get us through the night and get us a good start because we knew today was going to be a little bit overcast. Yeah, and it is not a very good solar day, so. Yeah. We can't use much power today because they're still not at full charge. Or well, I know when they are, it says 13.4. It said 13.1. It sat on 13.1 all day yesterday, so I should have known that it was sort of floating in that region between full charge and flat, you know, sort of thing. So, but you, as I say, with lithium, you can't tell. It just sits there in one spot all day until it gets to the point where it just shuts itself off. Yeah. Anyway, we know now. We know mm -hmm. we can get about 48 hours. <laughs> Well, it wasn't that long, probably about, I reckon we can get 12 hours straight out of the Starlink before we have to worry about yeah. the way we were run it the last yeah. few days. But we'll use it more sparingly, Yeah. Um, just because we know it's using a fair bit of power. So. I tried to come up with a heap of suggestions yesterday about how I could run it 24-7. Like, why don't we just get another lithium battery? We'll get a lithium battery and, a, and we'll buy an inverter and we'll just use that. And he's like, how yeah. are you going to charge it, darling? And then my costs started going up and up and up, and I was like, oh, righto, I'm just gonna have to use it sparingly. I do love it, it's just. Well, it's handy, it has its uses. Like, well, well, I just had it on because it was on. Yeah. I had nothing to do. Vic was having the nanny because we had a very bad night the night before. So I was just using it to just check out campsites and just Facebook and stuff. So yeah. I, I didn't need to have it on. Yeah. I just had it on because it was on and it was working, and I thought, well. We're paying for it. Yeah, we're paying for them as we use it. Um, yeah, well, we know. Yeah. I'll tell you what, it'd be a good time if you have in the caravan park or you've got really good solars, use it through the day to save your data on your phone. And then of a night, use your phone data rather than the Starlink. So, yeah, we'll work it out. Yeah. It's a, it's a learning curve for us. Yeah. And, but it does work amazingly. Well, like, we have absolutely no service here at all. Yeah. Our phones are dead. But, um, we hooked it up and like I said we were streaming Netflix last night we hooked it up one of the kids had a birthday la the night before and we were in a dead spot no phone service and we hooked it up and FaceTimed the kids so we do love it it's re it's bloody expensive um, and they need to get on to getting a 12 volt one yeah I think they're in I've heard talk about yeah um, a process of getting them hooked up at the moment through caravan places yeah. and that but it's fairly expensive thing but yeah star i reckon they will it's like everything it starts off to see how it goes and then they better them as they go mm. like eventually i reckon the starlink will come out as a 12 volt usage mm. but yeah yeah anyway there is a way i've seen that on a youtube channel somewhere someone that actually had it set up for 12 volt but there was a lot of money involved to get it to do that yeah we're not gonna i'm not gonna do that. around we don't that. Need it that often no we just use it as a luxury and the luxury went too far <laughs> That's all it is. As, as it usually does. All right, well, that's what happened to us last night. We found ourselves sitting in the dark. Yeah. But anyway, we... we fixed it pretty quick. Yeah. Yep. Didn't take much. Yeah. Because I know what they do. Yeah. But now we're just going to be aware because we're not at full charge now and we've got overcast, so it won't be going on the day. <laughs> and we're lucky that we were in this spot, which is actually in the middle of nowhere. There's not one other person around us. We're just in the middle of the bush. So, number one, like, Bliss could run around in his undies because we couldn't find anything because it was pitch dark. And number two, we could then run the generator for an hour just, just to give ourselves a top up and a start for, the, for today and just get everything through the night. So that was just good luck that we decided to come yeah. here and have a break that's yesterday. A, that's another reason why I carry generator. You mightn't use it often. Yep. i tell you what, when you need it, you've got it. Yep. So we'll never ever take ours out. We bought it for the van when we first got it and it lives there. It never comes out. The only time it comes out is when we use it. Yeah. That's it. So yep. that's a hot tip for us. Yeah. If you're going off grid a lot, um, I suggest a good idea to have a generator of some description with you. Yeah. Just to get you out of trouble. Yeah. You know, because without the power, the power wouldn't have been a problem. It's the fridge and everything in it. Yep. So yep. we want to keep that cold. Yeah. Anyway. Mm. Good. Anyway, there's our little lesson for the day. If you don't want to end up in the dark, go easy on your Starlink. Yeah. That's a good tip. Right, eh?
So. All right, we'll catch you on the road.